Welcome everyone to another episode in our geography series. This video will focus mainly on the geography of the ancient Near East. We're going to start with um, just a basic map of the ancient Near East and uh, just orient ourselves with uh, where the different kingdoms can be found and the different centers of empire. Um, then I want to move on to a quick note about the Fertile Crescent. I know you'll run into a question about that on one of your quizzes, so I wanted to be sure and talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we're going to wrap up by considering some of the natural barriers, some of the geographical barriers in the ancient world that would have really played into Israel's um, prominence um, and also would have really affected travel throughout the entire ancient Near East. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, just to get our bearings, um, the Holy Land, or Israel, would be this uh, roughly carrot-shaped piece of land right here to the west of the Jordan River. Um, then to the southwest of them, we have Egypt, of course. Um, directly to the east, uh, we find Babylon, uh, the center of the Babylonian Empire. Um, before them, of course, we had the Assyrian Empire centered in Nineveh, which is here to the uh, northeast of Israel. Um, Damascus, directly to the north, was the center for the Arameans, who were enemies of Israel as well. Um, further to the north, we have modern-day Turkey, which, of course, was roughly the boundaries of the Hittite kingdom, uh, centered in Hattusa here. Um, Greece and, and Rome, Italy, are to the west, of course, on the Mediterranean, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of where things are as we begin. Okay, I just wanted to cover the Fertile Crescent very quickly, because I know you'll run into a question about it on one of your quizzes. Um, the Fertile Crescent is basically this area marked out in slashed lines. It essentially followed the uh, Tigris and Euphrates rivers. That's what you'll need to remember for your quiz. But um, essentially where you have people, you will need water. So as you can see, it kind of hooks down into the area of Israel, what becomes the Holy Land. Um, but really it's centered around the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. When we're considering the strategic position of Israel, and really travel in the ancient Near East in general, um, there were four barriers that really came into play in travel. Um, heading north, we hit it, uh, ran into a northern mountain chain. Um, to the south, of course, we had deserts, which were very difficult. To the west, we had the Mediterranean Sea. And then to the east, we had the Jordan Rift Valley. Let's look at these quickly. The northern mountain chain started clear over in Spain and ran all the way across two continents to end almost to the Yellow Sea. Our barriers to the west and to the south, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. We have water and we have desert, both of which were a big problem to the ancients. Uh, the barrier to the east, though, the Jordan Rift Valley, it takes a little bit closer look. It's part of a large fault line known as the Afro-Arabian Fault, and um, here's another view of it that may be helpful. And uh, as you can see, it starts basically in the northeast corner of the Mediterranean and runs deep into Africa, all, all the way to Mozambique. So uh, it would have been a major, major um, hindrance to movement east and west out of Israel. We covered this in the last video as well, but I just wanted to show you a quick map of the different people groups who have tried to invade and control uh, what became the Holy Land over time. Uh, if you want to look into this a little more, you can pause the, uh, the video and uh, make yourself a list. Pretty much everybody um, tried to control this little sliver of land because of some of those barriers we talked about. Well, that wraps up this video. Hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of how geography is affecting events in the ancient world. Um, I hope to do a few more videos on geography in the future. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying them. Um, if you have questions, of course, post them below, and I'll be more than happy to help. But um, until then, have a great workshop.